The Conjuring 3 is chock full of Easter eggs from secret Annabelle and Nun connections to classic horror movie tributes and clues to the movie's big twists and reveals. Yippee Kai, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing all the things you might have missed in The Devil Made Me Do It, and explaining how the movie connects to the wider Conjuring universe. Spoilers ahead, of course, so take care. The creepy Annabelle doll is an iconic figure in the Conjuring franchise, and The Devil Made Me Do It expands on the story behind the satanic cult, Disciples of the Ram. In The Conjuring 3, Ed and Lorraine meet Father Kastner, a priest who investigated and exposed the Disciples of the Ram. Kastner tells the Warrens they shouldn't underestimate the power of these Satanists, and when Ed asks him why someone would target an innocent child, The why is irrelevant. The why is counter to everything that the Satanist stands for. His sole aim is chaos. Echoes what Detective Clarkin told the forms in Annabelle about what he'd learned about the cult. They did this to prove their devotion of sort of violence for violence sake. While researching the Disciples of the Ram, Kastner collected various occult objects and books, and kept them locked in his basement room, similar to the Warrens' artifact room, where they keep the Annabelle doll and many cursed and haunted objects from their investigations. And his answer to Lorraine's suggestion that he should burn all of it. I've thought of it, and I felt it was safer to keep them locked. I like taking guns off the streets. Is similar to what Ed said in The Conjuring when we were first introduced to the Warrens artifact room. Why not just throw them in an incinerator? Well, that would only destroy the vessel. Sometimes it's better to keep the genie in the bottle. It's kind of like keeping guns off the street. And there's another Conjuring Easter egg and the devil made me do it, as the Perrins, the family from the first movie's haunted house, a name dropped when the Warrens received some get well soon flowers. Look what the Perrin family sent. That was sweet of them. The demon nun Valak was the main antagonist in the Conjuring 2, and although she didn't make a direct appearance in The Devil Made Me Do It, after Arnie's been possessed, there's a creepy little nun figurine in his bedroom at the boarding kennels. Also in the movie's epilogue scenes is the creepy painting of the nun that came alive in the second Conjuring movie, and which has now been moved into the artifact room for safekeeping. However, notice how the painting is kept framed in the shot as Ed brings the occultist's cursed chalice into the room, reminding us that Valak is still the principal villain of the franchise and lurking in the background, just like Annabelle who is also carefully framed and shot when the camera switches angles. By the way, there was also another little nod to The Conjuring 2, when Lorraine sees an upside down cross while searching for the occultist's location, referencing the chilling scene where Janet sees all the crosses in a room slowly turn upside down. A similar moment happens in the opening of The Nun where a crucifix slowly inverts as Valak emerges from the depths of the Abbey, and in The Conjuring Universe, inverted crosses are a demonic indicator, such as the one that appears on Frenchie's neck in The Nun, and which the Warrens talk about during their presentation about possession. And like that, an upside-down cross started to appear from within his body. Balak, of course, got her own evil backstory in the Nun movie, and a connection with The Conjuring 3 that you might not have noticed is that one of the occultist victims, Jessica, is played by actress Ingrid Bisu, who also starred as Sister Oana in the Demon Nun's origin story. The fact that these two characters are played by the same actor could throw up some interesting theories about The Conjuring universe, especially given that, spoiler alert for The Nun, Sister Oana Anna was already dead in that movie. Just before Arnie murders Bruno, take a closer look at the two posters on the wall behind his landlord. First of all, there's Black Sabbath's iconic album cover featuring a mysterious, even maybe witch-like woman, a reference to the occultist who is manipulating Arnie in this very moment. And then there's Ella Fitzgerald's Mac the Knife, the famous song about a legendary criminal, which foreshadows how Arnie is about to pick up a knife and become a notorious killer. There are a number of books you can see behind Ed and Lorraine in the office of Arnie's defence attorney, but one of particular relevance is Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell by Susanna Clarke, because the novel is set in an alternate history of 19th century England, much like how the third Conjuring movie puts its own fictionalised spin on real life events, giving us an alternate history of the trial of Arnie Johnson. In The Conjuring 3, director Michael Chavez wanted to pay homage to several iconic horror movies. So at the beginning of the film when Father Gordon arrives in a cab at the Glatzel family home with a hat, coat and briefcase, the mist and black silhouette figure that he forms is a homage to the scene where Father Merrin arrives in The Exorcist. Other references to the iconic film include how David wears speckled blue pyjamas during The Exorcism like Reagan and how Arnie sacrifices himself for David by inviting the demon into his body, similar to Father Karras in The Exorcist, although the outcome of course is different. 
Chavez also says that the figure of Arnie appearing in a window as Father Gordon arrives is a deliberate reference to Janet Lee seeing Mother in the window when she first arrives at the Bates Motel in Psycho. And the shot of David being showered with blood inside the bathtub may also be a nod to the iconic shower scene in that same film. The waterbed scene in The Devil Made Me Do It is also another deliberate homage by the director to one of the first horror movies he ever saw, A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. So when David senses a face appearing to him from inside the mattress, it's similar to how Joey in Elm Street 4 sees a model appear to him inside the bed. And the hand bursting out of the mattress to grab David is a nod to how Freddy Krueger jumps out of the waterbed to attack Joey. When Ed is possessed by the occultist while he's searching for Lorraine in the tunnels, the shots of him holding a hammer and dragging his injured leg along are a little hat tip to the showdown at the end of The Shining, where Jack Torrance limps along with an axe and is, like Ed, being influenced by an evil entity. There's an Annabelle Easter egg via the name of the Palmieri funeral home which Ed and Lorraine visit to try and make a connection with the occultist through Jessica's dead body. Palmieri was the name of the Pasadena apartment complex that Mia and John moved to in the first Annabelle. You're the lieutenant at the Palmieri, huh? It's also the name of Mary Ellen's crush in Annabelle Comes Home, Bob Palmieri. Bob's got balls. How you doing? There's also a visual shout out to Annabelle Comes Home via the creepy colour wheel that's been added to the Warren's artifact room. The wheel terrorised Judy Warren in that movie when it manifested the many forms Annabelle has taken in the Conjuring franchise. I like your Although I prefer previous Conjuring villains like Valak and Bathsheba, the occultist has some interesting paranormal powers such as the ability to manipulate her victims from afar and create optical illusions to trick them into acts they wouldn't do. She made Arnie Johnson think his landlord was some kind of hellish creature attacking him and also made Ed Warren momentarily think Lorraine was an evil monster. The occultist had a copy of Lorraine appear in front of her mirroring her movements exactly. This trippy moment was foreshadowed at the beginning of the movie during David's exorcism, when the camera Drew was filming with was knocked over. As the camera continued to film, it was pointed towards a TV that was screening the live recording, causing an image of the screen to replicate itself endlessly. This was a neat visual piece of foreshadowing that was originally going to lead into an even more trippy sequence than we got in the final movie. In the trailers for the film, you can see a deleted scene where Lorraine sees many copies of herself replicating endlessly in a spiral of sorts into the distance. And if you want to learn more about that, as well as all the other deleted scenes, including a cut post credit scene, I'll be talking about all that in my next Conjuring video. I'll add a link for you to watch it here and in the video description as soon as it's ready. So what did you think of The Devil Made Me Do It, and how does it compare to your other favourite movies in this franchise? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, leave a thumbs up, and a share is also hugely appreciated. Tap left for my full Conjuring Universe playlist, or tap right to learn all about the secret zombies in the Army of the Dead, their alien origins and hidden timeline twist. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!